A very good morning and warm welcome eight standard for your online teaching learning session of general science. Today we shall start with a new lesson 17 man made materials. Let us see. Uh, there are two items being mentioned in the table and the materials uh, which are used, okay, uh, are wood and plastic, okay. Now, wooden chair, they say that uh, it is made up of wood, right? So, it will come under natural category, whereas comb is made up of plastic material and it comes under category man-made. Since wood is naturally available in the nature and plastic is a man-made material. What is plastic? It's a man-made material showing the property of plasticity and made of organic polymers. Okay, polymers means multiple chain. Poly means multiple. Okay, now what is plasticity? Plasticity is nothing but that particular material can be molded or given any shape. So, you have seen so many different variety of plastic, right? You have a plastic bottle, you have a plastic stool, you have a plastic chair, you have a plastic uh, scale and so many different things of made up of plastic, right? Some are linear while some are circular. Now, depending upon effect of heat, we have two types of plastic. One is thermoplastic, second one is thermosetting plastic. Now, thermo means heat, okay? So, thermoplastic is nothing but this plastic is moldable or it can be molded as per our wish. That is, you can give it any shape that you wish to, okay? For example, uh, the PVC, that is polyethylene, uh, polyvinyl chloride, uh, which is used for manufacturing toys, combs, plates, bowls and etc. Whereas the another one thermosetting plastic is such which once shape is given with the mold that is whatever shape you wish to give it cannot be changed even after heating. So your examples are electric switches, coverings of the handle of cookers. Okay. Now the basic difference is that these thermoplastic products if they are heated again, their shape can be changed. But what about thermosetting? No, their shape cannot be changed even after heating. So, these are the two types of plastic. Thermoplastic and thermosetting plastic. Okay, so you can see on your screen thermoplastics. These can be melted repeatedly and you can change the shape of the products as per your choice. Whereas thermosetting plastic, once the shape is given, even after providing it the heat, it cannot be melted and no other shape can be given to them. You can have a research or you can search for more such products which are thermoplastics or which are categorized under Thermo setting plastic. Now we are looking at the properties of plastic. They are light in weight, so they are easy to carry. Now, whichever plastic you lift, see, you can easily lift the plastic. You don't need any more strength or extra strength to uh, pick up the plastic or handle the plastic. Many small, small children are also able to lift many of the plastic products because they are very, very light in weight. Does not corrode and decompose. So, basically they are unaffected by humidity, rain, heat, etc. So, they are not affected or they remain unaffected because of the climate or environmental changes. They you know, it doesn't matter if there is change in the season, if there is heavy rain, if there is extreme uh, temperatures, high temperatures, humidity, moisture, whatever it is, this plastic will, is not, uh, will not get affected and hence the products are also 
not decomposable or they do not get corroded. Bad conductor of heat and electricity. Any color items can be made. Now we all are aware. We have studied in lower standards. Whenever we want to save ourselves from any shock, okay. So what do we are supposed to wear? Either we are supposed to wear wooden chappals or we are supposed to wear plastic chappals, right? Because they are bad conductors of heat and electricity. They can, do not carry the heat and electricity or transfer either of them and also whichever color item you want you can make you can see on the pictures on their screen they are so colorful all the different things are made from so bright colors right so any of the color you can choose these are all the specific features of plastic can be molded into any shape this property is called as plasticity. We studied in the start of the lesson. Yes or no? You can see different products of different different shapes are being prepared. Now, plastic and environment. What is the relation? Let us see. There are some materials in the nature which are easily degraded. They are called as degradable materials. Whereas there are some who do not degrade or decompose at all. They are classified under non-degradable material. Now here is the chart. Which will help us to understand that plastic is non-degradable. And hence it is an environment pollutant. So let us see. Vegetable is a material and the degradation period of the vegetables is 1 to 2 weeks. And obviously the type of material is degradable. So it degrades so fast and easily. Next material is cotton cloth. Cotton cloth takes 1 year to degrade. It's a degradable material. Coming to wood. Wood takes 10 to 15 years for degradation. Again, the type of material is degradable. Yes, it degrades. Obviously, it takes a longer period of time, but it does degrade completely. Coming to the first non-degradable material here, plastic. 1, 2, 3, 10, 15. No, it takes thousands of years. Okay, and imagine the amount of plastic that we use on daily basis. We cannot even have a count of it. Okay. So obviously it's a harmful pollutant to the environment. Now our responsible citizen. What are we supposed to do? Follow the 4 R principle. What are these 4 R's? Reduce, reuse, recycle and recover. Reduce means lesser use of plastic, minimal use. How much ever less you can try to use the plastic, try to avoid. Reuse, keep on using again and again. Okay, so just after one use, do not throw that material. For example, a plastic bottle. So keep on using that plastic bottle again and again. Every day buying a new one is not good. It is going to increase the waste and non-degradable material in the environment. Recycle. Use again after processing. Try to use the products which go for recycling process and then they can be reused. Hence putting less burden on the nature and the environment. Recover. That is Try to recover the loss that you are been doing to the nature and the environment. And then only this is how we can save the environment from the pollution. So remember these four are as a responsible citizen of the country, you need to follow them. We should opt for the items made of degradable material instead of plastic. 
obviously yes we should always use such material which are easily degradable in the nature and it does not take a toll on the organisms okay the aquatic and the land organisms the animals example jute bag cloth bag paper bag etc you might have seen in recent years we are trying to shift from plastic bags to jute or cloth or paper bags yes because it's high time we do something to protect our nature and environment from the pollution and the global warming next we got to study about thermocol now you might have seen so many uh, products delicate products we order online or we buy them okay from the shops so uh, these you know uh, delicate products they are always covered in thermocol right uh, since this thermocol is very uh, you know uh, it gives a protection but this thermocol students is not at all in favor of the nature and the environment why that we'll be studying now thermocol is this form of a complex material which is called as polystyrene okay don't get confused in the pronunciation of the word polystyrene it transforms into a liquid state on heating at more than 100 degrees celsius temperature and returns to solid state on cooling again now sometimes you might have seen when a thermocol sheet or thermocol box or anything made up of thermocol is burned it transforms into liquid okay and then again if you go to cool it down it will return to its solid state nowadays so lot of thermocol products are not been seen in the market and also thermocol is banned okay but previously thermocols were also used on a large scale now because of this okay you can give any desired shape since it melts on uh, or uh, 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 heating and then again solidifies back on cooling another property is since it's a good shock absorber it is used in packing of delicate items like i told you okay even when you have refrigerator when you have glass uh, products made up of glass or you know crockery sets they are always packed in thermocol because thermocol is a good shock absorber it will not let your products being damaged you can also make a list of the products uh, made up of thermocol that you use in your daily life let us see the adverse effects of excessive use of thermocol and environment and human since the ingredients used in polystyrene are carcinogenic that is cancer causing there is high possibility of blood cancer for the people who are in continuous contact with thermocol okay and blood cancer types are leukemia and lymphoma non biodegradable material it is so it takes a very 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 long duration for natural degradation obviously much more than the plastic hence people you know try to destroy it by burning which will cause release of harmful gases in the nature and again it will be disastrous causing increase in the pollution now you might have seen in mass gatherings or in functions or uh, you know in programs where there is uh, when there are huge number of people the plates the cups that are used for serving food water tea juices are made up of thermocol now this affects our health in adverse ways how if the food kept in thermocol is again and again heated okay the styrene the ingredient that is used to make thermocol may dissolve in that food because of this there is very very high possibility of health problems and the last one is effect on the persons working in the thermocol factory they might uh, have problems of eyes respiratory system skin and digestive system etc which means that 
entry of thermocol in any way can affect your health. Pregnant women, if they are working in the thermocol industry, might face miscarriage. And also the liquid styrene can cause skin burns. So, more than the advantages, we have a list of disadvantages because of which it was a high time that the thermocol is being banned. The next topic we have to study is glass, okay? Kanch that we see. Uh, Y'all can make a list of all the uh, glass items that you use on a daily basis and of which different colors uh, glass do you have in this, those items. You can just sit and do this activity. It will be quite fun. Now, what is it? Uh, we have always been using glass material on a large scale. Yes or no? This glass students was discovered by chance. Okay, it was not planned. Now what happened is some Phoenician traders, they were cooking in the desert. Okay, now the cooking vessels that were supported on the limestones. Now when the cooking vessel was kept off the limestone, Okay, it was removed from that. They observed that there was a transparent material which was being formed. Okay. Now, initially they thought that this transparent material maybe have formed because of the heating together of the sand and the limestone since they were cooking in the deserts. Now, what happened is from here, uh, the development of technique of glass production began. Glass, which is a non-crystalline, hard, but a brittle solid material formed from mixture of silica and silicate, to which we refer as sand. The rate, when we visit to beach, we have seen the rate with the sand, yes? Okay. So, if you see, it's not crystalline and it's pretty hard. Okay, now there are different types of glass that is where some are quite delicate and some by some are stronger than those and also it's brittle. It's not very very soft. Depending upon the proportion of silica and all the other components which are mixed to form glass, there are different types of glass. Okay, so along with this uh, silica, okay. Uh, there are not many different materials being mixed while we are producing glass. So, the different types are soda lime glass, borosilicate glass, silica glass, alkali silicate glass. Okay, so here are different types. The first picture if you see, okay, on the right side, these are used in laboratory. Okay, these are the borosilicate glass. Now we will see how the glass is being produced. What is the production procedure? First, mixture of sand, soda, lime and a little small quantity of magnesium oxide is heated in the furnace as you can see on the screen. This sand, that is the silicon dioxide, melts at 1700 degree Celsius, which is very, very high. Yes or no? So, to melt this mixture at a lower temperature, pieces of discarded glass are then added because of which the mixer then melts at 850 degree Celsius. Okay? So, this is how it happens. Once all the ingredients of the mixture are liquefied, it is then again heated up to 1500 degree Celsius and then immediately cooled down. Okay, immediately you have to cool that down. When you go for this sudden cooling step, the mixture becomes homogeneous. That is of the same one phase, amorphous and transparent instead of crystalline. Hence, sudden or immediate cooling after heating up to 1500 degrees Celsius is very, very necessary. 
So this is how your glass is being produced and finally it is being cut and given the shape as desired. Let us see at the properties of glass. On heating, this glass becomes soft. Okay. And because of which it can be molded or given any shape that you wish to. The density, okay, of the glass will always depend upon the ingredients present in it. Okay, so we have studied previously based on the ingredients also mixed with the silica. Uh, your different types of glasses are there. And here the density of the glass will always depend upon the ingredients that is mixed. Slow conductor of heat. It does not immediately conduct the heat. If you pour a hot water, okay, into the glass immediately the glass will not conduct the heat and it will not become hot as you experience in the steel glasses. Okay. On quick heating of the cool glass or on quick cooling of the glass, it will immediately break or crack. Okay. So that is why immediate heating or cooling of the glass should not be done as it's a slow conductor of heat. Since it's a bad conductor of electricity, this glass is used as an insulator in electric appliances. Many of the electric appliances, if you see, the glass is being used. If you have any time used or seen an induction, there also you will see the glass being used. Okay, even in the electric stove, that is gas, cigarette that you have at your place, there also you might have seen glass. Okay. Because it's a bad conductor of electricity, it does not conduct electricity. Being transparent, most of the light passes through it. Yes, we have seen that also and we experience that on a daily basis. But if there are any oxides of chromium, vanadium or iron in the glass, this large amount of light is absorbed in the glass. Okay, so that care has to be taken. Now, there are different types of glass and their uses. For example, we have silica glass, we have borosilicate glass, we have alkali silicate glass, we have lead glass, we have optical glass, okay, which are used in your spectacles, lenses, microscopic lens, colored glass, okay, uh, which have different colors being given to them. And the last one we have is processed glass glass okay so some pro processing is being performed on this glass and then different types of glass products you can obtain okay so here we complete with your lesson number 17 man-made materials next time i'll be providing you with the notes of this lesson till then keep on completing all the other lessons in your workbook students and keep studying now your school is regular okay so study well take care stay safe all the best see you next time